So, I am a 23-year-old Italian male, living in not so small a town in southern Italy. Now, it's not the most secure town in the world. In fact, we have a long history of microcriminality connected to a local mafia. But if you're smart enough, you can keep yourself out of trouble. I need to explain my daily commute and context first to make things better to understand. Basically, I live in the old part of town, as here is common for every town to be built around its antique part. And after a 1980s earthquake destroyed a good part of it, it's become very affordable to live here, and some parts are beautiful and well kept. Others are not so, so you find good families and great folks sharing spaces with more pesky dudes. Doesn't help that the town's castle has been converted into a prison, but luckily only for minor offenders. Now to the encounter itself. It happened in January. I just came back from uni. It's just a 20 minute drive in the car. But with terrible public transport, it can take up to an hour, maybe an hour and a half to get home. And as I like to study in the library, till it closes at 6.30, I usually come back home at 8pm or later. I get greeted by my dog. Her name is Maya, a beautiful sweetheart, an innocent one-year-old lab. And I take her for a walk around this part of town and the castle, since it's her other spot to meet other street dogs. So she was taking longer than usual to do her business, and I was freezing because I was wearing lighter than I should have. Plus, it was snowing, which is incredibly rare here, and was the first time Maya saw snow, so she was excited too. For that, I decided to walk back home and grab a jacket to take the delight of this occasion. And on my walk home to cut shorter, I have to pass this abandoned building under construction. It's pretty shitty. It only has pillars and floors done, but a lot of kids used to play and climb around it. Now as I walk there, I see this guy standing. His back was facing me, still like a rock, with his head facing up to the first floor of this abandoned building, wearing a dirty beanie heavy winter jacket, and tracksuit too wide for his build. At first, I froze on the spot, but it wasn't an extraordinary encounter, since there are a lot of weird people around, and I decide to pass on. But the first red flag was when I watched Maya, her back fur raised, and was looking at this guy dead on. She never did this. As we walk to him, she keeps this behavior. And as we walk past, she emits a low-pitched growl that makes this man turn around. I never saw his face around here, and if you aren't local, you really can't end up there if you didn't want to. And oh my god, his face was creepy. Typical greasy hair and undone, and a three-day beard. He extended his hand to Maya. Hey doggy, how cute are you? Stupidly, that calmed me down a bit. Maybe he was just a mentally ill person walking around. I know some of them around here, and they all pretty much look like him. There is a dormitory for mentally ill people whose family cannot or doesn't want to take care of them, fairly close to there. But when he was trying to pet my dog, I hear something moving on the first floor's concrete, though it must have been a cat. But Maya would already have been jumping around trying to catch it. So I looked up and see this little girl around 10 years old. She had only fear in her eyes, wide open, really desperate, and I'm not exaggerating this detail. She had a familiar face though, must have been one of those kids that play around the building. She must have seen me walking my dog around. As soon as she saw me, she recognized me. She caught my eyes and tried to whisper, help, with her lips. After this, I turned my head around, and now the creep is watching me. I would like to say he had the usual creepy smile, but he didn't. He just had a very serious face now, looking dead in my eyes. I didn't know what to do. I'm about six foot two and kind of imposing, but I never fought anyone and I am a really peaceful guy. In a fraction of a second, this guy looks up again and says, Come down, sweetie. We need to get home. The food will be getting cold. Yeah. Sure, totally believable. Who are you? What are you doing here? I ask him. I am her uncle. I need to get a home to eat, he says with the most serious look. 
I was thinking what to say to use as an excuse to bring her down and get her to safety. And, being the sarcastic bitchy type in this situation, I say, That's strange, because I'm her uncle. This doesn't add up. At this point, the little girl has the brilliance to lean off and say, Hey uncle, can you get me home? Mommy will get worried. Now this guy didn't seem threatening at the moment, just creepy. So I go under the building to take the little girl. And as I prepare to grab her, Maya first growls at him, then barks. Maya usually has a really feminine high-pitched bark, but with this guy, it was really low-pitched and even scared me. To that, I turn around and see this guy with the hand behind his back, reaching for something. Oh shit, I thought. I can't fight for anything. If this guy has a knife, this would end pretty badly. He stops his reaching motion as the bark is now continuous. And in the heat of the moment, the little girl leaned off and I grabbed her with one arm, the other one keeping Maya at bay as a deterrent. And while she was descending, I asked if she had a phone. No, I don't, she said, and you could hear she was on the brink of crying. So as soon as she touched the ground, I unlocked my phone and gave it to her. She took the phone and immediately legged it. I should have been glad to it, but my immediate thought was, if she did all this to steal my phone, I would be pissed. After all, it wouldn't have been unusual. But I basically asked her to take it. Anyways, the girl is gone. I turn around, and this guy has a knife out. Not a pocket knife though, one of those big ass kitchen knives that you use to cut bakery bread. And me being so careless in the kitchen, I know how damn sharp those things could be. So I decided to run away too, but Maya decided, no, I want to stand here barking at him, and I couldn't manage to pull her away. She is about 30 kilograms, but I had a grip that was too strong, even for her. So there we were, stalling, and this guy starts swinging the knife in the air. I want to run, but if I leave my dog, I know she could end up really bad off. And even if I managed to pull her, he could run after us. And there we were, him swinging the knife with empty eyes, my dog barking, and me shitting myself for not knowing what to do. And to make things worse, my hands were freezing cold from not wearing gloves, and my grip on the leash was really starting to hurt. The thing that still surprised me in that situation is the fact that I'm absolutely sure that people around the block could hear this, but no one, not a single one decided to take a look. Anyways, after what seemed like a long time, but was probably less than two minutes, I hear heavy footsteps from the street. And from there, a lot of people showed up, probably her dad or some of her relatives with a baseball bat. This is not going to end well, I thought. As soon as the creep saw those men, he threw the knife in my direction. Luckily, terrible aim, but I still had to move to not get hit. He started to run to me, trying to go in the street in my direction. I didn't even try to block him because I was still frozen by the knife. But Maya bit his leg, ripping a piece of his tracksuit off. But the dude didn't even care and ran for his life, with some of the girl's supposed relatives behind him. He eventually managed to get them off, but the girl's father came to me. I thought to thank me, but instead he screamed. Who was that guy, huh? Whilst waving the bat around. I looked at the girl, telling him to calm down, but he only got more pissed until the girl ran up telling him that I helped her. She gave my phone back. After all that, he calmed down. He apologized and said thanks for helping her out. He also offered to grab me a coffee at his house. I politely refused and went home, deciding that I already went through too much shit for the night. I slept it off. The next morning, the police rang my bell so they could take my statement. The guy managed to run off. The officer showed me a book with all the signed photo IDs and stuff, but nothing came out of it. He probably wasn't even from nearby. You could tell from his dialect accent, and that was the end of it. I didn't do the best I could, but I'm glad I helped the little girl. I don't know where she would be if me or someone else didn't show up. So creepy uncle wannabe guy, let's not meet again.
This happened three or four years ago, and I will randomly reflect on it every now and again. I was home from college for the summer, and my parents were out of town with my sister for a dance competition. I was tasked with taking care of the house and our dogs while they were away. It's either a Friday or Saturday night, so I have friends over to drink, hang out, and then go to the bar. We lose track of time catching up and decide to head to the bar at 11.15pm. One of my friends lived a 5 minute walk from my house and realized he not only left his ID, but in fact his entire wallet at home. So he runs ahead to go get his wallet, while my other friend and I clean up a little bit. We get a roadie, and then we head over to go get our Uber with him. For context, my parents' house is in a residential area, just outside of a city, so it's filled with families, old couples, and the like. As my friend and I headed out, we notice a man walking his German Shepherd, a little ways behind us in the same direction we're headed. Though we both remarked that it was strange for a man to be walking his dog close to midnight on the weekend, but we carried on. We were both 21 at the time, walking with a red solo cup each, just chatting. As we get within about a minute of my other friend's house, my friend leans in close to me and says, I think this guy is getting closer to us. I nervously glance over my shoulder. I disagree, just to not panic. I look back at him, and as I do, he looks over his shoulder and yells, Oh shit, yes he is. I kid you not, as I hear this, I look back, and the man and the dog break into a sprint. Like seriously, a full-blown sprint. My friend and I freak out, throw our cups down, and we book it. We get to my friend's house, run up the driveway, get to his side door, and it's locked. We aggressively bang on the door, thinking this guy and his dog are going to attack us, but they stand at the end of the driveway, looking at us. My friend screams at the guy, asking what he wants, and why is he chasing us. We can now tell the guy is older, and has a scruffy voice. You are trespassing, he replies. We both yell back in unison, that this is our friend's place, and we were waiting for him. I'm freaking out at this point, trying to catch my breath and yell to him. Who are you? Neighborhood watch or something? Yeah, he replies. My family has lived in the same house for my entire life, and I have never once heard of there being neighborhood watch, let alone a neighborhood watch that patrols the streets late at night. After his answer, he and his dog turn and walk away. There is a pretty large brick wall on either side of the driveway, so once they walk away, we can no longer see them. Right at that moment, my friend comes out of his house with his wallet, asking what are we yelling at, and to shut up as his parents are sleeping. Our Uber arrives just about the same time. I run to the Uber that is at the end of the driveway, look down the street, and don't see a thing. I ask the driver if he had just seen a man and a dog walking down the street. No, he replies. I just came from back there, and I didn't see anyone or anything just now. Not once have I seen that man or dog since, and it still haunts me to this day. Here's some backstory. My fiance and I recently got an adorable two-year-old German Shepherd back in the end of February. She's been a great addition to our family, and she loves her mama so much. I've had many dogs in my childhood, but I've never had one as loyal or as smart as my current German Shepherd. Now, this encounter happened a little while ago, but my mind still goes back to it every once in a while. My fiancé and I live together in an apartment complex, which is nice as it offers some nice amenities for our new pup, like a dog park and a large space of grass right outside our apartment. We usually take our pup to this space of grass to let her run around and do her business. This one day though, my fiancé and I decided to take her out together so we could all get some fresh air. It was hot, 90 degrees plus, so I was only wearing a sports bra and shorts trying to combat the overwhelming heat. I am walking her and taking her up and down the hill until she gets done doing what she needs to do. When I notice her turn 
to where some cars are parked. She is the type of dog who loves other dogs, but doesn't care one bit about humans, so I assumed maybe there was another dog around. Instead of turning back to finish her business, she keeps her eye on the cars, purposely positioning herself between me and the cars. A few seconds later, I watch as the man exits around the cars. I didn't notice him before. During all of this, my fiancé is a little bit out of it, so he doesn't notice any of this. But as the man walks around the cars, and down the road around the grass, my pop is tracking him with her eyes, and keeping the separation between the man and I. Eventually the man stops and pulls out his phone, pointing it up to the sky to take a photo. My fiancé, still being the goof that he is, stares up at the sky too, and comments about how beautiful it looks. But because my pup is staring at the guy, I'm staring at him. I just have the feeling that there is something wrong with him. My pup doesn't care about other humans. They could walk by at any time, and she wouldn't give them a second glance. But with him, it was different. When he finished taking the photo of the sky, I watched as he turned the phone towards me and my dog to take a photo of us. Now I know, I wasn't scantily clad, but it was hot and all I was doing was taking my dog out. Nothing else. I had locked eyes with the man as he turned his phone, and I could tell that it freaked him out a bit. Seeing that I had caught him trying to take a photo, he hurried away after getting caught. My pup and I watched as he walked down the road. I haven't seen him since. I'm not sure if he lives in the complex or if he was just walking through, but I am happy my German Shepherd was looking out for me. She got plenty of treats when we got back inside for that. I am the proud owner of a golden retriever, and as any retriever owner knows, these dogs have endless energy. As the weather is cooled, she loved running off her leash. So I found some parks near our normal walks to take her. Usually we'll do this at night, because there's nobody else around, and she can run without having to be called back all the time. Sunday, I was doing exactly this around 10 o'clock. There's a sledding hill by my house that is behind a museum. It's a long grassy area with some woods. There's a frisbee golf course there. It's pretty good for letting the dog run. As I'm starting to walk down the hill, I can see clearly as it's night, a light from an LED camping lantern moving around, like a guy is looking for something. I think nothing of this. I know I'll have to walk past the guy with the lantern, but it doesn't really bother me. I'm a middle-aged guy, and honestly, I just didn't have the alarm bell go off in my mind. We continued to walk. Now, this area is pretty dark. I have never thought anything of that, because I know it, and there's enough light to walk by. But with this lamp, it's obviously harder to see. I paused my iPod, as I do when I may have to talk to someone on a walk. And it's about that point that I notice the light isn't moving. It's shining right on me. So that's weird, but I keep walking, because I'm halfway through the area by now. And as we're walking, the light is following me. I can't even see the person holding the lantern, but it's a big lantern. That's almost too big for whatever this guy is doing, and it's about this time my dog freaks out. My dog is, like most retrievers, super good natured. I have never heard her growl. The light is scaring her though, and she starts to bark in this way. That makes me realize that I'm kind of creeped out by this. Why hasn't this person said anything? What the hell are they doing down here? I have to grab my dog by her collar, put her back on her leash, and physically pull her away from this light. We get through the park fine, nothing is said. This person's car is at the top, and I took a picture of it in case. The whole thing was super creepy, even though nothing actually happened or was said. Just something about being noticed, acknowledged, and silently watched as I went by the person that was very surreal and terrifying. This happened not too long ago. I was at Eden Mill Nature Center in Maryland, walking my dog. It was just before sunset, so the park was completely abandoned. Not a single car in the lot. 
This place has a few miles of hiking trails that grows into thick woods. On the first mile of the trail, you come up to a bridge that crosses a river. I have walked my dog here before, but for some reason, once we got to the bridge, my dog would not proceed to go across. He's a little dachshund and has a very loud bark. He was not barking though, just standing still, staring across a 20 foot bridge. I went with what my dog was doing and proceeded to wait and watch into the forest across the bridge with my hand on my pocket knife. Finally, after a minute or two, the small farm vehicle comes down the hill across the bridge. The guy, or whoever it was, just looks at me and my dog real quick, then slowly proceeds back up the hill. I may just be overthinking the situation, but it was definitely weird. I turn back and quickly walk back to my car. The fact that my dog would not move across the bridge really makes me think that he suspected the possibility of danger. If you know Eden Mill Park, then you know that after the bridge is a long pathway that is completely covered in trees, making it very dark. And if my dog did not stop me, I would have been halfway down that trail alone, with a vehicle pulling up behind me, blocking the trail. It may have been nothing, but the fact that I have never seen my dog behave that way made me think something bad would have happened if I continued down that trail, without having my dog there to alert me. It really changed my view on dogs. They really can detect if something is not right, way before we do. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to leave a like and comment, and subscribe if you haven't yet. Just a quick update for those that haven't seen the post. I've now created a Patreon. I'm still going to be posting 4 days a week on YouTube, but know that signing up would be appreciated. I want to say a huge thanks to Courtney Maxwell, my very first patron on Patreon. I will have some perks listed. I'll be holding polls and doing focus groups. I'll also upload outtakes. Those are the few of the things that will be up for grabs on Patreon. And I will always appreciate the fact that you still watch the videos on YouTube. But if you did fancy getting more involved, that's one of the routes you could do it. And last bit of news, I'll be moving Saturday's videos to Fridays. I'm just testing when it's best to post the videos. Anyway guys, thanks for listening. I'll see you on the next one.